I greet everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To truly know God, you have to have certain defining moments in your life. Defining moment is a, a, an experience that you have with the Lord knowing that He is truly for you and not against you. It's wonderful to see examples of that in the Bible. It talks about Elijah. I'm going to read from James chapter 5, 17. It says, Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Elijah is a man that truly had he had his ups and downs like we do there is a moment in time in first kings chapter 18 god asks him a question elijah what are you doing here as we turn the pages back a couple of chapters we see that elijah had prayed that it would not rain because israel had walked away from the lord and if you continue to read from chapter 17 and 18, it specifically says the word of the Lord told Elijah to do certain things. He told him to go to leave the place and a widow would take care of him. The ravens fed him and the word of the Lord directed him to go and do these things. And then there came a time where God said, I'm going to send rain, but there had to be a demarcation saying that if God is the God of Israel, he will not allow any idols to be in his presence. So there was a showdown in Mount Carmel. Elijah called the prophets of Baal and said, okay, we're going to prove this once and for all that who is God. So the prophets of Baal came and set up their sacrifice. They yell, they scream, they cut themselves. They did everything, but their sacrifice was not consumed because their God did not answer. Elijah, in a sense of mockery, said, is your God sleeping? So Elijah decided to prove that Jehovah God is truly the Lord Almighty. So he asked the altar to be built. See, those are the key points that I'm going to share, that when he built the altar, it was torn down he repaired the altar sometimes there are in our lives the altar or our communication with the lord is broken we have to find out where we stand and fix that altar and then he gathered 12 stones and those 12 stones represented the 12 tribes of israel he rebuilt the altar and he dedicated it to the lord then he put the sacrifice on it and then to make things truly prolific and amazing what he did was he doused the sacrifice with water three times and then he trenched water around the sacrifice saying that it was completely impossible in human terms for this sacrifice to be consumed and what he did was then he prayed to the god of abraham isaac and jacob and he said, Lord, reveal yourself to who you are. And fire came down from heaven and consumed everything, licked the water in the trench, and God showed himself to be almighty. Elijah had that defining moment. But it says that he was a man just like us. So he thought that this wonderful act of God would turn the hearts of people back to the Lord Ahab and Jezebel would repent of their uh, sins and all the prophets of Baal would be killed. Elijah went and did what he was supposed to, but then the power of God came upon Elijah and then he outran Ahab on the chariot and went to Jezreel. When he got to Jezreel, he saw that there was no change that had happened and he became very, very upset. And Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you by this time tomorrow. Here's this man who had a Mount Carmel experience, totally on fire for God. Now he's running for his life because someone said to him, I'm going to kill you. First of all, 
we see that the power of the Lord came upon him, but it did not say the word of the Lord spoke to Elijah to go to Jezreel. So he outran God. He did not wait for God's timing and he outran God. And now we see a, a prophet who's despondent and he goes and sits under a broom tree and he's saying, Lord, I just wanna die. I don't want to even live. But we would think that God would come in saying, what, why are you here? I'm God, he didn't do that. God came with amazing wisdom. He sent an angel and let Elijah rest. He tapped him on his shoulder, get up and eat. So he baked, he cooked for him and he made some food and gave him comfort and hope and said, Elijah, get up and eat. He did that twice. Man is a tripart being, he's body, soul, and spirit. So God took care of his physical need, his emotional need by touching him. And the, the second time when God came to him and said, you have a long way to go. It's time for you to get up. And then he went to Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai where, Mount, where Moses had an experience with God. That is the conversation that God is having with him saying, Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah expected God to answer him in the way that he thought God should answer. Elijah had boxed God into a God of his opinion and his mindset. And God is saying, Elijah, what are you doing here? And then he said, Elijah, I want you to come to the cleft of the rock and I'm going to show you something. God, there was a tremendous wind. Then there was an earthquake and then there was fire. There was so much power of God being evident in Elijah that Elijah didn't even want to come to the cleft of the rock. He sat in the cave and then the still small voice, a whisper. God spoke to him in a whisper and Elijah heard that. And then Elijah goes and gives his sex, six complaints those six complaints are talking about, I've been loyal for the Lord. I've been doing this for God. Uh, there are no prophets left. I'm the only one left. And God listens to him and he says, uh, Elijah, what are you doing here? Again, Elijah gives six of these complaints to the Lord. And God had enough. God said, I have a plan, but you predetermined in your heart that this is the plan that you had for the Lord and how he should act. But I want you to do three things. Enough is enough, Elijah. Enough of your pouting. It's time to run with the commission that I'm going to give you. I want you to go anoint Haziel, king of Aram. I want you to anoint Jehu, king over Israel. And I want you to anoint Elisha, who's going to be your uh the one who's going to take over your ministry. I want you to do three things. Basically, God was telling Elijah, I've got this. You don't worry about how I'm going to act and what I'm going to do. You're going to have to rest in the sovereignty of who I am. And Elijah listened to him. And to make the story to come to a conclusion, we see that God took care of Jezebel, who had threatened him. God punished everyone who brought all of this into existence, all these trouble, and God took care of what needed to be done. Elijah was just a man just like us. He had doubts. God worked through him and prayers were answered through him. Oftentimes we see that we sometimes sit under the broom tree because we're trying to box God into a into how he should answer prayer. How come you answered prayer according to uh, someone else's? Why aren't you answering my prayer according to that? That is something we have to reckon with. We have to understand that God is sovereign and he will do what is best for us. And we have to leave the final answer to him. And that's when trust and faith comes into our life. And I pray that this short message that I shared with you, just the whole portfolio of God, how he can manifest himself, the still small voice. And that still small voice for us is the word of God. When you're in doubt, when you are not knowing what to do, just seek the answer in the word of God. 
Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God will strengthen you in your body, in your soul, and in your spirit. And I pray that you will walk in obedience to the word and just let God be God and let him manifest his glory in your life. Elijah surrendered, he obeyed, and he was taken finally up in the chariots of fire. I pray that the Lord will continue to enable to have, for you to have a great faith walk with him. May the Lord bless you.